On today's Try to Finish Something, I want to start with an apology. I know the videos have been leaning heavy on the nerd stuff lately, and I'm not going to lie to you. There are going to be a lot of nerd videos, but there is a payoff. I am officially a member of the 501st. I am a member of the 501st Legion. In fact, I've got my first troop coming up on the 31st of May. If you're in the Atwater, California area and you're going to be at the Castle Open Cockpit Day, I'll be the Mandalorian. I have my first troop and my journey with the 501st isn't over. I've got plenty of other kits that I'm going to go for approval and you'll be there for that journey as well. The other thing is, I don't know if the free t-shirt giveaway that is still going on, you have about a week left to get in for that. I would love to give you a free shirt, but it seems to have kind of backfired. My subscriptions have actually dropped since trying to give you a free shirt and I don't understand that. But Star Wars isn't my only love. As you can see, I love Volkswagens as well should probably edit that. Let me, let me try that again. Star Wars isn't my only love. Other than my wife and kids, I love Volkswagens too. Yeah. So this week, I had a special delivery and because I haven't been focusing on my shop, I don't have anywhere to put it. I have been working on a 1967 Volkswagen bus for a long, long time. And today I'm going to introduce you to that 1967 bus. And I'm going to tell you a little story, a story about drugs, deception, theft, and redemption. And that's what I'm going to do, introduce you to my 1967 Volkswagen bus on today's Try to Finish Something. It's finally back. It's been over 30 years since this thing has ridden the wide open roads of California. And the first time I've driven it in daylight. And only the second time I have ever driven it. It's time for story time with Uncle Sean. I'm going to put together this luggage rack while I tell you the tale of this 1967 VW bus. This bus spent 15 years of its life being traded back and forth between Stockton and Oregon for weed. Guy in Stockton would run out and trade pot for bus with Oregon guys. Guy in Stockton would want his bus back and would pay the Oregon guys. Eventually, he would run out of money and pot and trade again. He went back and forth like this for many, many, many years. Now, before you think they were driving it back and forth, it was just a shell. It had four tires and two axles, it was full of a bunch of odds and ends parts, and it had an engine, but the engine was full of water and sitting in the driver's seat. I was turned on to Stockton Guy after I had been looking for a VW for a while. Money had dried up for the Stockton Guy and the Oregon guys would no longer trade the bus for weed, they wanted cash. So he sold me his bus for $2,000 cash. The body was in great shape, but it needed a lot of work and I wanted to start with the exterior. I met a guy named Troy. I'll leave his business and his last name off. He told me he was the best guy to do body work and paint. Others would lie to me and try and cheat me out of my time and my money. He said that if I helped, he would give me a great deal. And that's exactly what I wanted. He towed the shell to his shop. I would go and sand and do body work and he would assign his employees to instruct and to help me. There was a lot of work and a lot of sanding and priming. Eventually, he told me some crazy story about people trying to run him out of town because he was taking too much business away from others in town and he was moving to a new shop. No problem, I didn't care. I would continue just working at the new shop. The problem is when I would go there, he was always doing some new side project out of his shop and I couldn't do or work on the bus, but he would tell me that things had been done and demand $200 here, $1,000 there to pay the employees that had been working on my bus. But the things that he was telling me started to overlap and I started to question things and I said that I was done handing him money until I saw some progress. The next time I showed up, his shop was empty and my bus was gone. I did a few months of digging and finally found out where he had moved yet again and got a long list of stories about why he hadn't contacted me, he lost my number and blah blah blah. He said I had to pick up the bus today, the day that I was talking to him or he was closing his third shop and he was just going to leave my VW bus there. That's when I met an amazing VW guy Jason Ellie on Facebook. He hooked me up with a paint and body guy Johnny and towed my shell of a bus to his home paint shop. 
he actually did stuff. Johnny got it primered and painted, and then Jason hooked me up with Stacy Wetnight, a VW mechanic to help out with some of the other odds and ends of the bus. Nine years and a lot of lies and a theft later, things were finally starting to happen. And just a few days ago, Stacy called me up to bring the bus back home from his garage. My wife and kids drove me out to get the bus and I didn't realize I didn't have seat belts yet. Those had never been ordered and I didn't have any old ones to put in. The tags were also nine years out of date. So under the cover of darkness, I drove my bus the hour drive home for the first time. By the way, it wasn't an hour because it was so far away. Top speed was 53 miles an hour and I was terrified. Holy crap, you forget the noise level of old cars. My wife called and I couldn't hear a thing. And no power steering and manual shifting. And I loved every minute of it. Okay, the luggage rack is done and installed. Here's a couple photos I've taken over the years, the progress of my bus. And here are some shots of it now. I still need to get seat belts and get it registered, but it's home and it's running and I'm calling this finished. As always, if you like the channel, please subscribe and don't forget about the free t-shirt giveaway in the video description. And as always, if you didn't, please keep it to yourself and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something.